sure there's actually a difference of opinion. Some some scholars actually say it's Isaac as well. Shall we have a look at him? Shall we pull it out and have oh, a look? Oh, you know what? That's a, I don't know. Bro, I mean, the it. thing is, man, like you, 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 you've accepted this religion as the truth. Is the sound okay, bro? Yep. Right. You, you've accepted this religion as the truth. Yeah. Right. But it, it, you, it, I think it's worthy of you to consider the criticisms of Islam to see if they might have merit. Mm. You and I both know that if the Quran has contradictions within it, that therefore it's not from Allah. Yeah? And I want to show you a very obvious contradiction. What between you don't need to yeah, you don't need you don't need to be you don't need to have some degree in Islamic theology. You just need to have a reasonable mind, and I know you have a reasonable mind. Sure, but if you it's like if I now come to you and say uh, let's talk about uh, I would take it. I a would. new perspective from Paul. Yeah, I would talk about it. But then, if say, so I've tried to talk to people about this before, Christians, yeah. and they didn't know about it. So well, I'll tell you what, how about I give you this deal? You talk to me about what I want to talk about, and then I'll talk to you about that. Sure, but it's like you've, you've prepared, you've, you have notes and everything. You've prepared well, you've literally, you literally just presented a topic to me that I haven't prepared for. So it is, it is, no, it is but fair. I, I, rather, I rather talk about something that I actually know stuff about. Well, like I said, you don't need to have a, a, a massively intelligent thing you know, you're like degrees or qualifications. Well, it's not about degrees, but it's at least a topic that you know I've touched up on it, and because there might always be that you know, it's, 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 this is the thing, the, uh, the frustration I had uh, sometimes, not with you personally, but myself. Yeah. I talked to you about something. For example, we had a conversation about ambiguity in the, in the, in the Quran, and yeah. you, you kept asking me, "What's ambiguity? What does that mean? Yes. How do we define these verses?" And it was words. the answer, the words, right? But they're and, not sounds. No, no, but. Uh, there was two things which I didn't pick up. One was that there's clear verses and there's ambiguous verses. What you thought was that ambiguous here means unclear. But ambiguous means what it means. Yeah. The answer I kept saying to you is ambiguous verses. It's in, it's in the word itself. Yeah. Ambiguous means many different many ways of understanding it yeah and that's that's what creates meaning because you, your understanding of um, I'm just recapping because your understanding of the verse was that it means if there's clear verses and there's ambiguous verses these ambiguous verses must 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 be uh, unclear however that's not what it means Un um, ambiguous here means uh, generating meaning generating loads of meaning you know, that's what ambiguous, ambiguity means. Now, if I remember that conversation correctly, what I was actually pointing out is that not everything in the Quran is a word. That there are some sounds in the Quran that have no meaning. Because a word is that which communicates meaning. Mm. And Muslims affirm and deny yeah. that Allah has hands, they affirm, but we don't know what those are. Mm. Which is a, a, a logical and rational contradiction. You know, you, you say things like, Allah is above his throne, the lowest heaven is below his throne, Allah descends into the lowest heaven, mm. but Allah doesn't move. That's a contradiction. It's, so, it's a linguistic contradiction. It, thank you very much. Yeah, a linguistic contradiction. It but, is a linguistic contradiction. But if we talk about like theology and all these other things, then obviously we know, even in Christianity and in Judaism, that there are certain devices that they use to understand certain things like that. You know? Yeah. Um, and, but the point I was trying to make, when I had the conversation with you the first time, I felt really stupid afterwards because I was like, Oh, I could have said this, and I could have said, and I remembered this, and I remembered that, and that's the nature of the thing, the conversation we have with you. You have excellent criticism and good questions that you're asking, but I feel ambushed sometimes, and I don't know how to answer all everything. Well, I'm not. I'm not, uh, what I would love, and one of the reasons why I've come to talk to you, sure, is because you strike me as one of those sincere Muslims that I know exists. Yeah. You're not like Ali Dawa. You're not like Mansour. You're not like Shamsi. Like, they, you're not like the guy I've just just debated and he ran away. Like, you can have a conversation. But don't you think it's because you have some history with them, though? It's because I've beat every single one of them for the last two years and they're sick of getting their arse worked. And that's why they run. Because okay. I expose them constantly. Like I just did, just now. But, but like I say, you, I, I want to have an intelligent, sincere conversation with you that I think would give you good reasons to leave Islam. Because you believe that this book can't have a contradiction. Do I believe that? Yes. Uh, 
I, I think Do you want me to show you where the Quran says? Well, I mean, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. So, so the Quran. The, let me bear. Let me find it. Bear with us one second. Well, you might. I'll quote the verse, and you tell me if you recognise it. If this were from any other than Allah, they would find many contradictions therein. Do you recognise that verse? Yeah. Right. Do you agree that's a Quranic verse? I'm not. Yeah. Right. So the Quran affirms, which means you have to affirm that the Quran is free from contradiction. Yeah, there would be many contradictions. Right. Course. So, if I can find contradictions in the Quran, I've met the Quranic challenge to demonstrate the Quran is not from Allah. Agreed? Uh, yeah, I mean, but then where, where does... I notice there's no trick questions here. These are just no, but then, logical questions. It's very... But where does like things like hominifics come in there? Right, just the fact of like looking at something and then based upon your own engine and your own like um, criminological experience yeah, you look at a verse and then it may be a contradiction to you hence why the verse has many contradictions the Quran doesn't say actually they would, they would find no contradiction whatsoever does that mean we could possibly find one or two I think maybe to do and that's you see this is why I'm so apprehensive about these conversations because now we just open up a whole new chapter which I have looked into like if you want to talk about slavery or anything that I really have looked into I can but this stuff I vaguely know about it and I'm, I can't give you the answers to it but what I what I uh, uh, but I don't think yeah. you need special learning what does to... many mean why why does the verse say if why does this verse not say you would find no contradiction why right. does it translate as many contradictions? because it would be more than two okay yeah and we found loads we yeah. found many no, but why? Demonstrated. Why, why would it go, I, and I've got another one here for you. Sure, I know. We, we, we get we'll get to this. it. Okay. But I'm saying, if the, if this book says I am that like, this book is is from God, right? Yeah. Why would it then at the same the same breath say, well, you wouldn't find you would you would you would find many contradictions, meaning like, what is there a possibility yeah. that, that there are contradictions? So I yeah. think I think the sense of that verse, the sense of that passage, which whilst I haven't bothered to find it yet, we both acknowledge that it's there. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Um, it, it's, it's essentially affirming, it's, it's offering a, a proof that this book is from Allah because it's saying you're not going to find, I actually think what it means is you're not going to find any contradictions okay. in the Quran. And I think in my experience from talking to hundreds of Muslims, that actually that's exactly how Muslims interpret it, that you can't find any yeah. contradictions in the Quran. So many is just saying you're not going to find one, okay. I think. I see. And I think. And my experience of talking to Muslims affirms that mm. because that's how they've understood that yeah. verse. Yeah, I don't believe there are any contradictions, but I'm just saying it's... A, exactly, so yeah. you would now be amongst the hundreds of other Muslims that yeah. have affirmed the idea that there are no contradictions in the Quran. Yeah. So I'm Quran saying itself. if I can find one, and I have found many, but if I can find one, you have a good reason to leave Islam it depends because as a then, rational human being. Because then your contradiction might have somewhere a, a reconciliation I don't know about. Great, so you okay. can always look into that. Yeah. But l go through with me what we're reading. Okay, cool. Okay? So in th Surah uh, 57, reading from Ayah 104, we'll do it systematically and we'll go through what it says. It says, this is the, st do you know the story, by the way? In, if, uh, it's the story if, of Abraham. Yes, yeah, sure. Right. So he says, we called out to him, O Abraham. Who's the we here? Who's the we? God, right? You're the one Allah. 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 But yet here you are, you've walked all the way from over there to right come and now. listen to me. That's what I'm saying, everybody else is boring, so you're more excited than everybody else. Oh, that's what I'm oh sorry, I heard that you're not totally, listening well, I heard man. that totally the wrong way around. I'm so you. sorry, <laughs> thank you. Right. Then he goes, Thou hast already fulfilled the vision. Thus indeed do we reward those who do right. Who's the we here? Well, we? Re Allah. Has Allah, been, yeah. right, brilliant. For this was obviously a trial, and we ransomed him. We ransomed him yeah. with a momentous sacrifice. Who's the we here? Allah, I guess. Allah, the yeah. Royal, royal we. Oh, it was the we here, it was yeah. the we here, yeah. it was the we here. Yeah. And we, we, we. And we left this blessing for him among the generations to come in later times. Who's the we here? Allah again. Allah again. Peace and salutations to Abraham. Thus indeed do we reward those who do right. Yeah, so Who's Allah, the we Allah, here? Allah. Right, great. 
So we establish the one that says we is Allah. Right? Now, what is a ransom? Uh, a ransom means when you... Uh, Think about a kidnapper. Yeah, you have a kidnapper and he uh, requires or, want, or demands, is a better word, yeah. uh, money or, or conditions. Great. Yeah. That's a ransom. And I agree, that is exactly what a ransom is. You see, you don't need any special knowledge for this, you just need to be able to think logically. Sure. Right. Who is Allah ransoming to here? And who is he sacrificing to? It says, and we ransomed him with a momentous sacrifice. Who is yeah. he doing that to? Uh, is he talking about uh, Isaac? He's talking, well, we say Isaac, you say Ishmael. Ishmael. But at the moment, that's not the issue. Let's just, for the sake of this argument, let's both say it's Ishmael. Just for this argument, so we don't get sidetracked. Yeah. Who is Allah offering a ransom to in this passage? Abraham. So Allah is committing idolatry? Yeah. No, right. So how does Allah, how does, what does Allah owe to Abraham? No, but the story goes, if I, if yep, I can yep, remember, the story yep. goes that uh, Abraham is asked to, to sacrifice yes. the son. To who? To Allah. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's to Allah. I know it's definitely a sacrifice that God demands of him. Would it be to anyone other than Allah? Would, would, uh, would Allah ask Abraham to sacrifice to any other than Allah? No, he wouldn't, but I don't right. know if it was to, but it was, uh, I know that uh, something was demanded of uh, it Abraham. It was a dream. It was a dream. Yeah. Huh? It wasn't asked, it was a dream. In a dream? Yeah, yeah. yeah so he didn't do it? He oh, no, never no, no, took no. his child to the no, hill? No, he did, he did. There we yeah, go. The action right. happened. Yes. So in a dream, Abraham kept seeing yes. uh, that, and then he consulted with his son, and then his son told him, if, you, you, if you've been told by your Lord, yes. then you have to obey. So my question is, now yeah. we both agree that a ransom is when a third party requires something of you and you pay the ransom for yeah. someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's what a ransom is. My question is, who is Allah ransoming to in this passage? So basically, from what I understand, the story goes then, that Abraham, just when he's about to do the act, yep. uh, the, the animal appears. Yes. That was the ransom. That was the sacrifice, yes. That was the ransom. You're totally yeah. right. Yes, yeah, so but God my, replaced. But my, I, I agree. Yeah. I'm not disputing that. I, 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 we've got the same story in Genesis. We believe in exactly the same thing. But my question is, again, who is the ransom to? What is a ransom again? Tell me what a ransom is again. Um, yeah, so what, like I said, ransom means, you know, if you if if you have a hostage or something. Yeah. And the it's a payment. Yeah, a payment. Yeah. So it's a payment from party A to party B mm -hmm. for some reason. Yeah. Right. So for some reason, you pay party B because of X. Whatever X is, we can fill X with anything. Right. Party A pays party B. Mm -hmm. The Quran is saying that Allah ransoms, for the sake of argument, Ishmael. Who possibly has something over Allah that Allah needs to ransom them from? What is, uh, whose party B? I don't know, what, what's the Arabic term? Can that someone check? I, Can I read it? it? Yes, of course. Yeah, the yeah. word used in France yeah. and maybe not that. Yeah, it might not be a good translation. Okay, it's translated it as, but even the Arabic? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Which one? Here, this passage. Number this is the Arabic. 107? Yeah. If I do not believe in Arabic. Is the word ransom there? I don't think it's a ransom. It's a, you, you are given a replacement. A replacement? Of, of like, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's the word um, anyway? And, and what's the, you know, the Gentlemen, what is, what, is the, what, is the, what is the express belief uh, that can be backed up in the Quran or That's any That's what we do every year. Right? We do the Where sacrifice. That, that is do the sacrifice. Allah that appeared to Abraham. Sorry, no, no, no offense. No, with, with the greatest respect, I, I want to prosecute my argument and I don't want to get sidetracked. I mean, we, you're ransom. asking a lot, but why don't you just make your point? Then? Right, I, I am. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, in terms, of, in terms of this word, now, the, the, reason, the reason why I'm going to reject your ad hoc translation, the one that you've just given this moment. I'm not giving ad hoc, I want to understand. Listen, listen. Abdullah Yosef Ali translated this. Abdullah Yosef Ali works at a university 
in Saudi Arabia. He's a Saudi citizen. He is an Arab, and and he was he was commissioned to do this translation. So I'm going to stick with this translation, not yours. What does it say in your translation? It says ransom as well. And and there we have an independent secondary translation that also chooses the word ransom. But then, so on on a, on a majority vote of two to one. We should stick with the word ransom. Yeah, and then can I uh, read uh, the the bookmark where it says that? Yeah, go on. For ra ransom, so that verse in particular says we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. We ransomed him. Yeah, yeah. and then it says Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent a huge ram to be sacrificed to place of yes. Ishmael. Yes, right. So, so, like, so the word, place. so the word ran. No, no, no. At the end is the no, 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 no. The word ransomed, as you have already identified, and have I already di identified, is between party A and party B. But let's do it another way, because you you you. you well, see, would it be would it be difficult if we say replacement? Would that change your argument? Well, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is that that isn't the Quranic word. The Quranic word is ransomed, and we've got a two to one majority in terms of which translation we should follow. That the word right, should be I, ransomed. If, if, and, and if we pull up the Quranic corpus and look through all the different translators, I bet you the word ransomed is sure, in the majority. Sure. Do you know why? Because um, yeah. I've already checked. Good. No, it's not all right. I just want to hear the point he's making. Right. No, but the, the thing is that he, he didn't mention so, so, what so, we say. So, 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 so my point is, is... No, no, no. no. It is important. You're absolutely that, right. So my point is, my, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to a conclusion now. Sure, sure. Okay? The Quran is using language unbefitting of Allah. Because the word ransomed is clearly a transaction between two parties. And it is absolutely... Muslims criticize Christianity because we say that the son of the father ransomed us through his atoning death. And you attack that and you say, why did God die to save us from God? But here we have an example where Allah is making a transaction that is proper to two parties, but it obviously can only be to himself. But that is logically irrational because Allah is one person. So there is a logical contradiction that a person feels that he needs to ransom something to himself. But you see, because in authority, because he's al-Maliki, yeah. he is not beholden to himself, he simply wills and it is. You know, you know, you know Bob, you know what I've noticed with your argumentation, yeah, is that uh, a lot of the, your argumentation lies, 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 Let me listen on, to his reply. lies on to, like, um, Depends a lot on like linguistic uh, understanding. So you would use it. You would so you would use a term like ransom. Yeah. No, no, no. Then, that's the Quran's yeah, term. I know. I know. I know. I mean, as in you would um, uh, highlight the, 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 the word ransom. Yeah. And then you would run through it uh, through what ransom means in the English language, and you try to. Well, we have to understand, but you would do that, and then your argumentation uh, um, rest upon uh, linguistic. And then you bring theology into it. Yes. So, like these things sometimes, because theologically speaking, Oxum Razor, if I was to make it the most simplistic way, explain this to my child, yeah. I would say to my child, God replaced Ismael, uh, uh, the Ismail or Isaac, depending on what you believe, with the ram. Right. That, that's literally what this story was Let, all about. Let's progress the argument further. Who's the sacrifice to? What was the dream about? Okay, this this is why this is why I kept I kept saying what I was saying, right? Yeah. Because because what we gotta remember is I don't believe man, anyone anyone has a higher understanding of Islam better than my own, which is probably quite a lot in the park. I got um, to them all, they all run away. Is that do we believe that just because Abraham had a dream that it was definitely from Allah that the dream came from? No, but we believe it was from Allah. No, that's what he believed. What I'm saying is, is there a guarantee that it no, was no, no, but no, no. why would God then stop? No, 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 but Islamic the theology, Islam, Islam, according to Islamic theology, the, the message that Abraham received was from God. We believe that. There's no yeah. question whatsoever about it. He's right. There's no question whatsoever about it. Yeah. So my, my, my point to you is this. One person... Sorry, sorry, Bob. One yeah. second, one second. Hold on. What... what Abraham got a title. What was his title? Khalid Allah. Right. And what does it mean in English? Friends, friend of God. Yeah. Did he ever hear the voice of Allah? Uh, 
Oh man, you open up some. Uh, no, did no, 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 bro, 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 bro. Can Allah? I ask? Can I? Because the only reason sorry. why I ask is if he was able to talk with Allah, why did Allah have to go to? Oh him man, that's it. Yeah, that's it. it's a great question. But uh, it's a great question, and and your imams don't have answers. But let me let me press prosecute my argument. Because, because God communicates to no 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 his, please God communicates to his messengers in different ways. We so know that the so, so let, him, let me prosecute my answer. Dreams, he would get revelation through ringing. He would get revelation through Gabriel. So let me let me, let me no, guys. Oh, sorry, yeah, thank okay. you very much. So let's go. The, the reason why this is a rational contradiction, guys, is because which can you can, can you think of an example where one person ransoms something to himself? It, it, it's illogical. It's irrational. Oh, Allah is one person. One second. Allah is one person. So Allah is one person. Now I'm going to be sparing. I'm going to be charitable. I'm not going to say that Allah is committing idolatry. That he's asking Abraham to ransom to some other third party. Mm -hmm. The only person that could possibly receive that ransom and sacrifice is Allah Himself. But the idea of putting on God, who is a singular person in your religion. The idea of a ransom is a rational, logical contradiction because one Maliki, the king, the all-sovereign, does not require ransoms for a thing. No, he simply course, says, course, doing it is. No, but but no, the Quran, no, 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 no. one second, the Quran is describing a ransom. Now, let me prosecute the argument a little further. Muslims attack Christian belief that Jesus Christ is our ransom. But in the Christian faith, it makes sense. Because the son is ransoming to the father. So one person is ransoming to another person. So when you criticize Christianity and say, how can God ransom himself? Why does God need to ransom someone through his son? He's God. He can just declare your sins forgiven. Well, I now just flip that argument back on you. And I say, why does Allah require a ransom for Abraham's son? By the way, that's a very bad, it's a bad, very bad, it's a very bad argument from the Muslims if they say something like Which that. Which they do all the time, including Ali Dawah, yeah, including Mansour, including Shamsi. Well, Shamsi loves that argument. No, sorry, the only, the only point I would make on yeah. it is that one of, them, one, of them, one of the faiths believes that we're here to be tested. Yes. Right? And therefore, we, if we are going to be in agreement, yes. uh, Allah did command this ransom, if you like, using the words that we've seen translated. Yeah. Yeah. That he was testing Abraham's faith yes. to execute his orders. Yes. Yeah. And to show that he is faithful and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? Whereas, if Jesus is God, how are you going to compare a ransom to the crucifixion yeah. for the job that he was sent for, in your opinion? Yeah and say that that was a ransom, yeah. clearly it was more of a sacrifice, therefore it was kind of like a, a suicide. Yeah, so, so, so let me, let me, and they, chose it. So, so let me, there was let, no test. so let chose me address, it. let me address this point, let me address this point, but I, I just want to point out that your argument doesn't get the Quran out of the bind that I've demonstrated. All it does is shift the discussion, and I'm happy to engage in that discussion. I'm yeah, not going to run for it. Stay yeah, yeah. Up. But what I'm saying both. is, yeah, I'm going to do both. But the, but all I'm saying is, at this moment in time, there has been no defence of the fact that a singular person has required a ransom to himself for no apparent reason. No, but right. But let me let me let me press on with what he said. Sorry, but let me, oh, sorry, you're confused. Let me press on with what he said. To clarify, to, the ransom is to himself. Well, of course, it can't be to anyone else because that would make Allah an idolater. Well, so, no, 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 I mean like... Well, it can't be to anyone I mean, else. Like, Who else could it be to? If, if I want you to do something, yeah. I say to you, yes. if you don't do this, yes. go and do this for me. Yes, actually. yes. How, how am I ransom? Uh, uh, the night of faith. Yeah, Kierkegaard talks about this and uses Abraham. He says, Abraham is an archetypical person yes. because he's the knight of faith because he goes against that which he loves the most, which is his son, and he doesn't want to kill his son. Yeah. But he's in this predicament because he's a man of God and because he follow, he's a prophet, he must follow commandment. It's not like he can or he, he has choice in it. Therefore, he's at the mercy of God. So, well, that's the beauty. He does that right. Choice. So, the thing is that, that gentleman doesn't want to acknowledge the replacement. He does not want to acknowledge that. It, 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 no. it, 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 it literally, it literally says right. ransom, guys. Well, You're trying to. What the reason? This is the. Well, the no, sorry. The sorry, the sorry, the sorry, the sorry. Hold on, guys. Is why is he so caught up on the word ransom? Guys, bear with us. Yeah, one, second. one second. One second. One second. Agenda. The theological concept. So that's why it's always tricky to do. Guys, guys, guys. 
guys, then, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sure, I'm gonna sure. press into what I'm saying. Sure. Right? Because you're right. Kierkegaard is right. Abraham is an archetype. He is an archetype of Jesus Christ. In this instance, Abraham is the judgment of God. Ishmael, oh, for us it's Isaac, but I just don't want to get sidetracked, so I'm going to say Ishmael. Yeah. You know that's Ishmael, believe it's Isaac Ishmael it represents humanity, and the lamb that is sacrificed represents Christ. But the transaction that occurs in Christianity, the ransom that occurs in Christianity, is between two persons. Jesus Christ is giving his own life in sacrifice to ransom our lives to the glory of God the Father. So you've got party A, party B, so no rational contradiction. But if you assert, as the Quran does, that the word is ransom, which it is, a ransom, as we've already established, is two parties making a transaction. But in Islam, there's only one party, which means that there is no need for the ransom. Hold on, the Allah, Allah could have just gone like this, Abraham, Abraham, you've brought Ishmael this far, I see you're going to kill him, stop. And that is all that is required. Because there is no need for a ransom. Because Allah is al-Maliki. And there's only him involved in this situation. No, 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 no. No, no but the, 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 what I would say Why to that as well, right, word, is that Malik, who? Malik, who? Malik, 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 Malik. 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 No, but sorry, that one. The, the one thing I'd say on it no, is that how does how would Abraham or Ibrahim feel when he receives receives revelation like this and says he has to kill his son? And all. How did he take? No, he was struggling. With did that. he feel like he, he was, was being tested in the sense of this ransom? Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. Would, the, would the language he would have used been ransom as well? Because no, that's the, like the language that the something. Quran uses. No, but there is a... So that's point. Allah's point. language, there and that's is, not befitting you're, of you're, Allah. You're right in the, that, that, uh, uh, that there, uh, there seems to be, uh, in the, in the pro primordial sense, yep. uh, a, a need for sacrifice uh, in religion. And we, we have this in Christianity, we have this with Jewish people, and we have it in Islam as well, that sacrifice still plays a huge role. Yeah. That, and, and that's why ransom um, may have been one of the reasons was used, because there was a need for, for a sacrifice to, to be made. Who ha but, but whose need is this? What do you mean? Who, who's asking for it? But because Allah is asking yeah. for a ransom. Allah gives a ransom. It gives a ransom, you mean. But the only one that is giving the ransom to is himself. Yeah, but what? why is that? There you go. Why is and that that's the contradiction, bro. No, no, it's not. Because, because think about when what... No, 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 you talked you about need. Well, Allah doesn't religion, have any needs, to, which yeah, means that he doesn't need a ransom. No, but let's do an analysis of the verse. It's yes. like it's like reading so, Shakespeare and then like just being so hung up on the, the literal. Like you, I know you're not a literalist, so why yeah. you? I'm neither am I in that sense. Pop, can right? I, can so I, sorry, one second, David. Pop, can I ask you a, a little question? Yeah. When you use the word, there's a contradiction. Which it is. Are you referring to all the Muslims that have stated to you that Jesus being a sacrificial lamb in Christianity? is silly, a silly idea. Yeah. Are they the contradiction? Or are you saying that the Quran is contradicting? I'm saying, it's good, so, so it's a good question, so I'm going to answer it. So the reason why I've come to you with this argument is because Dai in the park come to Christians and say things like, how can God ransom himself to himself? Okay. Yeah. Right? Point fair, right. Fair point, now, fair point. my point to you is, if you're going to attack Christianity for that argument, then I am entitled <laughs> to take your logic yeah. Attack your Quran yeah. using your logic. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, it's far worse in your religion than it is in mine. Because at least in my religion, when we talk about the ransom sacrifice of Christ, we do have party A and party B. We have party A, the Father. We have party B, the Son. And we have X, humanity. But in, in, in this particular passage, and, and that was all epitomized by Abraham's sacrifice in Genesis. Because what he was, what he, because Abraham, he's, he's having his faith tested. Yeah. And he's, and he, the test is to sacrifice his son, his only begotten son. And then as a, as a promise, as an archetype to what God himself was going to do for humanity, a sacrificial lamb was provided so that Isaac or Ishmael didn't have to die. But in Islam, 
There is only one person in Allah, which means that when Allah says, I've given you a ransom, there's got to be a party B. Well, right? And that party B doesn't exist. Well, you know what? This might be helpful to you as well, yeah. When you when you think about if you if if, if you think about if you think about sacrifice, yeah, sacrifice. I'm sorry, I can't hear you over these. Sorry, if you think about um, sacrifices and God demanding sacrifices in the Quran, there are a couple of different stories as well. For example, uh, Cain and Abel. Yeah. Right? God demands uh, sacrifice from them. One uh, is successful and the other isn't and becomes jealous and therefore kills the brother. Yep. Right? And we believe that's the first murder that takes place in human history. Yep. Um, when you think about these things, the meaning always behind it never seems to be the act itself actually. The same thing with Abram. It's not actually the, the act of the sac doing the sacrifice. That's like it takes secondary um, importance. What what is the primary importance here is the willingness and the intention behind that very sacrifice. Because one sacrifice, both sacrificed, one is accepted and the other is rejected. You see? Yeah. And in uh, in, in a ritualistic sense, when we sacrifice uh, as Muslims, there are very particular things that you have to do. For example, you don't cut your hair, you don't cut your nails, and you do yep. certain things in order for your sacrifice to be accepted. However, the ultimate sacrifice that one takes is by being is is, is being a Muslim. It's by being in submission to uh, that which is greater than you, which is God, and yep. you believe in that too. And I feel like when you read these verses, the broader meaning, like what is really trying to tell us, why, how is that going to help me in the 21st century? I don't have to go sacrifice my kids on the altar. It's never going to happen to me. But it's uh, telling us that on the path of God, one must be resilient and put your trust in God whilst doing so and also have people Surrounding you, helping you. In this case, uh, Isaac or Israel. Let, 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 can, no, no, can, can I add, I, can I add to what you just said? I, I, I want to reply. Second, he made, second, no, go on. During that time, yeah. during the prime time, there was a lot of paganism that sacrificed yeah. kids to the gods. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that's why he's like, beautiful. Give, come in to his dream that he should do this to please God. Yeah. God told him, no, you don't need to. Mm. So allow me to reply. To replace that, then you can have this as a way of life from now on. That's yes. what we do with so, so allow me to reply. True. True. So allow me to reply. So allow me to reply. Because because here's what I actually think has happened in the Quran. We both know that Muhammad was a traveler. We both know that Muhammad used to hang around with Jews and Christians and other people before he's calling to be a prophet. And we both know that Muhammad lived amongst the Jews. Muhammad was clearly exposed to the story of the Abraham sacrifice. But that story that he was exposed to is directly connected to the idea of what then became temple sacrifices in the Jewish faith. It wasn't just an archetype of, it shows that the ancient religion of God, is the ancient religion of God is that God does require sacrifices. And, and Muhammad picked up that story, but he never understood what that story was really about or what it really means. And he incorporates this story using language that the rest of Quranic theology does not correspond to. It does. And that's why we see a rational contradiction. Does, no, I let you finish completely and I let you finish completely. Let well, me finish yeah, completely. Well, well, come let come me come finish on. completely. Come on. You have any right? Yeah. So what we've seen is that God requires yeah. sacrifice and the Quran is borrowing that story because God requires a sacrifice to ransom Ishmael. He sacrifices a lamb to ransom Ishmael to himself, which is a dramatic contradiction, but shows that sacrifice and ransom are interlinked. In, let me finish. I'm, I'm landing. I'm landing. And in the Christian faith, in the Christian faith, that makes sense. Abraham sacrifices the lamb to save Isaac. In the temple, the Jews sacrifice animals to save Israel. In the new covenant, Christ's sacrifice saves us all. It says in Hebrews chapter 10, For the law 
since it has only a shadow of the good things to come, not the very form of things, can never, by the same sacrifices which they offer, continually year after year make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered, but because the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have consciousness of sins. But those who sacrifice, there is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That's the correlation between sacrifice and ransom. Christ is the perfect sacrifice, a necessary sacrifice for our sins. He is that ransom that is owed to the Father because we have insulted the honour of God by the sins we continually commit. But well, we have to, uh, we, no, let's not take well, sorry, sorry, You don't have a concept of what that. What you repeat is, is the paganism in Arabia, pre Islam, exactly just how he said it. Yeah. He's trying to refer to the gods yeah. by sacrificing kids. Exactly. Jesus. Did that for the gods. Yeah. And in Islam, or oh, Judaism came trying to correct that. Yeah. Failed. Christianity trying trying to correct that. It failed. I wouldn't say it Islam failed. Why are we always using these that. words? So, so, that's, so why, that's why when we do it's this, just the continuation. we feel that animals yeah, that we sacrifice every, every year no, but it really brings um, our cleanse the, 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 the sins that we have, have committed. So, so for like, example, sorry, let me, let me, let me, yeah, go on. I'm giving you... Yeah, go, on, go, on, go, on, go 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 on, what my ancestors did do. By the way, not all Arabia, Paganism. Some of them follow the uh, Abraham tradition. Not only paganism. Go on. Paganism was only in probably Mecca and some other uh, coastal area. So we, when we do the sacrifice in the past, pre-Islam was to remove the sin. That's exactly until today. Okay, when Islam came, when Islam came in, emphasized in doing this. So the, the tribes were doing it, they stopped doing it at this moment. So, so let, let me reply to that. Let me reply to that. Are you are you joining in, bro? Huh? You, or are you done? No, yeah, because there's too many people. Okay. So 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 my point to, so my point to it is he, he the brother's checked out. <laughs> He's checked out. Right. But my, my point to you is, bro, the, the first thing, you've got this complete misunderstanding that's been given to you by your Dai. Christ let listen, Christ laid down his own life. He laid it down, no one took it from him. He had the power to lay it down and he had the power to raise it up again. This was not that a third party took hold of Christ and then sacrificed him to God, which is what you're accusing the Christian faith of doing. No, that is not what we believe. That is not what we believe. What we believe is that Christ laid down his own life. So it's more like you're walking across a road, a bus is going to hit you, and then I run out into the road, push you out of the way, and then get hit by the bus myself. Like, I made a choice, no one forced me to do it. That is not what you just described. It's not the idea of human sacrifice. But, but listen, listen, because it goes on in Hebrews chapter 10. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil our hearts and bodies. What? Sorry, I've lost it. Bear with us. It's the wind. Yeah. Let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, the point is that without that sacrifice that God established in Judaism, without that sacrifice that God established through Abraham, without that sacrifice that God established through Christ, you can't enter into the presence of God because you are not clean from your sins. Furthermore, in response to this sacrifice, we Christians are called to offer our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Your sin, when God created you, what he requires of you is your life. Your sin means that you have turned away from him and you have not given your life. And the payment 
for that sin, the ransom, the debt that you now owe to God is a life, your life. But since your own sin stops you from ever giving it completely to God, God himself through the Son deals with the debt that you owe him. Now, just ask another logical question. Why would God establish the idea of temple sacrifices in Judaism and then remove it in Islam when you believe it's the same religion preached by all the prophets? Why would he have one system in one religion and then stop it in another religion? That makes no sense. What do you mean temple sacrifices? So, the Jewish the law... Is He's talking about the animal sacrifices. So, animal sacrifices... Is, the, 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 yeah, is that for your sins? No, we do sacrifices no. Okay. As no, but sometimes when we I thought it was the same religion though. When we do sacrifice, we ask God for forgiveness. I want to do this for my father, do this for my my, my uh, ancestors. So when you sacrifice the animal? Yeah, it, it, it's a, it, a year. A year uh, Are your sins being taken away? Because no, you do that the sacrifice? Sacri the no. sacrifice you're referring to yeah. is literally the story we're talking about. Yeah, but uh, the Isaac story. Right? Yes. But there's a mixing, and that sacrifice mixing. is a ransom. Notice the connection in your Quran. Sacrifice is a ransom, and that's, that ransom is being paid to Allah, which makes no sense at all, right? And, and this is the contradiction, and the reason why it's a contradiction, and the reason why it's a contradiction is because Muhammad was borrowing a story that he didn't understand. That story is connected to the temple sacrifices of Judaism. It was a prefiguration of the temple sacrifices, which is a prefiguration of Christ's sacrifice. God is not an author of confusion. He doesn't create one religion and then radically make it into something else. If God required a ransom sacrifice for Abraham and then a ransom sacrifice in the temple, then he requires a ransom sacrifice still for your sin now. So, so what's, all right, for the argument that you're making, I really want to talk about the ransom bit. Yeah. Just for the argument that you're making about God doesn't make one rule for one and then confuse it and then dilute it or whatever all the way up to his Yeah. Then why is it that no Christian or most Christians, I'll, I'll rephrase, you may be different. Yeah. Uh, one, have ideology on you in the sense of what I would call a picture of what I'm assuming to be Mary. Yep. And uh, a depiction of Jesus on you. Yep. Which I'd call an, an idol. Okay. Anyway. And do you eat pork? Have you been circumcised? Have you done all of the all of the rules underneath the Jewish? Like that. I can't even guarantee that they're all so. So, so let, let, let me let me reply to that. Why is it that you follow Saint Paul in that sense? Yeah. That he says you don't have to. Okay. Follow this so, so those are all the lies of the Dai. But let me explain because you have been deceived about Christianity by <laughs> the Dai. You have been deceived. Make a fair point. You have been deceived by the Dai. They lied to you to convert you to Islam. That isn't what Christianity teaches or believes, but let me explain it to you. God, God, right? God required a, a, a sacrificial ransom for Abraham's son. God required sacrificial sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins of Israel on the Day of Atonement, right? And what happened on the Day of Atonement, what they do is they do this. They take one lamb and they slaughter it, and give it as a burnt offering and then they put their hand on another lamb right lay the sins of that lamb and then send it off into the wilderness right that's why it's called a scapegoat because it escapes death in other words it's saying that death leads to life but it's also showing that it's also another potentate that points towards jesus who was both god and divine sorry human and divine because the humanity dies, but the divine does not die, it cannot die. Just like one goat dies and another goat doesn't. But the together they take away the sins of the world, right? And it's the same process. We've got a continuity in our religion to Judaism and to the religion of Abraham, who practiced animal sacrifice. Not one Jew would agree. Right? I don't care what I don't care what fifth century Jews say. But they wouldn't they wouldn't agree. With they wouldn't agree with you either. What does that prove? No, 100%. Exactly. So it proves nothing. A it's a moot point. We do that they do. But it's a moot point because they don't agree with you either. I I, believe, I do I just feel but like uh, Let me let me I'm landing. I'm landing. I'm landing. So the reality is Jesus Christ himself fulfills the law. He himself abolished aspects of the law in his own lifetime. He declared all foods clean. 
because Jesus Christ establishes a new covenant. That new covenant is not the old covenant of Israel because the old covenant of Israel was, was for one nation, but the new covenant is for every nation. And so the Old Testament laws particular to Israel are not required for the rest of us. Sorry, Bob, what, what, would, what would be your reference to the Bible where Jesus has made all food clean? It's in, it, it's, it says... Is it Paul? <laughs> no. Can you see, sorry, like sorry. you're laughing just no, shows no, your sorry. ignorance. No, 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 no. I, it's a genuine question. But, yeah. but I do believe that is the answer. It, yeah, yeah, but, but that's total ignorance on your part. Okay, would you because mind, all right, from, Jesus, a, from a serious and a yes, less rude point, Yes, and I apologize. Yes, yeah. Can you show me the reference where Jesus makes all food clean to eat? Yeah, sure. Bear with me one second. Yeah. Right? Again, just die lies. That's just die lies. Die lie to Muslims about the Christian faith. Continually. You lie, you lie continually about the Christian faith. All the time. All the time. You lie about the Christian faith. The die lie about the Christian faith. Tell us the truth. All the time. I'm, I'm many. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. You understand. You understand. Well, no, I really yeah. want, I really want to see where he's got this quote from. Right, bear with us. JC, just Google us where Christ declares all food clean, please. Sorry, remind me. Who, who right, I'll quote you the verse and then I'll show you the reference once he's found it. So Jesus, Matthew 15, 11. Thank you very much. Uh, we're just about... Apparently Matthew 15, 11. Right. Matthew, Matthew 15, 11. Bear with us. Yep. So here's what it here's what it says. It says Jesus called. Is this the red red letter Bible? Is this? Yeah, oh, cool. but but like yeah, because yeah, I can see the red. I just, so yeah. this is technically quoting Jesus, right? It just highlights Jesus's words yeah, by you. highlighting them red. Okay, yep. Right? Don't feed into that narrative that Muslims say, oh, there's lots of different Bibles. It's just a colour. I'm, I'm not. It's just, I'm just a colour. I'm just double, I'm just double you checking. You can put this print. Be, yeah, there's, lots, there's lots of Bibles that print this in black. Still the same words. Yeah. Here's what it says. So the question that Jesus was talking about is, is he's having a debate with the Pharisees about the traditions and the commandments. Yeah. Right? And Jesus says this. After Jesus called the crowd to him, he said to them, hear and understand, it is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man, okay. but it, it is what proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. So when he says that it's not what goes into you that defiles it, he's saying that all food is clean. That's not what he said. No. That is what he said. <laughs> so why, why, so, so uh, is food, does food I'm defile try, you? I'm trying to give as, as In as Jewish, as no, one second. In Jewish law, does pork defile you? But could he be also be talking about alcohol? No, I want you to answer my question. Sorry, Stop God. dodging it. No, no, I'm not dodging. I was right. busy thinking. Okay. No, I Same in as you. Jewish law. I'm thinking of saying, I can't In hear Jewish it law, <laughs> are there foods that are clean and unclean like pork? Yes. Right. If Jesus says that no food defiles you, what is he saying about food? Shut, all right, read it again, sorry. Remember the context in which Jesus but, is speaking. One second. I want to, I want to, I want because he doesn't use the Jesus, word food. He just Jesus, says what is not what goes in that defiles a man, it's what comes out. Yes. I, the words that are speaking. Does food go into you? Of course it does. Right. Do you take it through the mouth? But you also take alcohol in the does mouth. Does it go through the mouth? Drunk, you can say a lot of horrible things. <laughs> does it go you through the mouth? You will be standing for, wouldn't you? If I, if I, if I, if I, could I have the excuse of walking through the park and calls a per being drunk great, great. and saying a lot of bro, racist stuff? Great, bro, bro, perfect example. <laughs> Alcohol's a per can't, can I? Bro, exactly. Yeah, bro, you've only just made my point for me. I'll go for it. Go on. Alcohol. Well, let's use alcohol. Yeah. Right? Does alcohol defile a person? That's a good question. Does it? Does it? No, answer the question. Well, no, because we, we don't, we don't believe we should have it. We call it our I know it. And does it? Does it defile you? That's a good question. Right. My point to you is, Jesus is saying that nothing that goes into the mouth defiles you. So does that nothing include food? But again, we're talking about Jesus. I want you to answer my question. Parable, I want right? you to answer my question. It's not a parable. It's a statement. Okay. Jesus says nothing that goes into the mouth defiles you. Does food go into the mouth? Yes. If it's saying it doesn't defile you, mm -hmm. doesn't that mean that it's clean? No. Go and explain how not. Because I still think that he is referring to the language that you use and the excuses that you will have. Language comes out of the mouth, exactly. not into the mouth. Yep. Let's read Jesus' words again and I want so, you to address Jesus' words 
Jesus says, hear and understand, it is not, are you listening? Yeah. Not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man. What, what, what is not entering into the mouth other than food and water? And other liquids. You need to get the consumables. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, consumables. Yeah. So if Jesus is saying, entry. if Jesus is saying that it doesn't defile you, what is he saying about it? <laughs> now I want you to. You can laugh, but that's just another daily lie. No, You've, no, no, been You've been deceived. You've just been deceived. Because I think, I think the, the you point. You find it of funny because of the daily jokes. It, it's look, listen. What? I, and daily culture. Do you know daily here? Do you know? First time I met you. Do you know any daily? Yeah, they run away. He's a daily. He know, runs I, away. First time I met you. I don't know anybody yeah. who's here. Go on. Yeah, trying to say. Look, look. I don't think. That Jesus is necessary. Look, look. In, in, look, from an Islam, Islamic point of view. We're not talking about Islam. We're talking about what the New yeah. Testament yeah, yeah, says. I'll come back to you, I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're I not do, talking. Do, no, hold on one second. <laughs> hold on one second. We're not talking. You asked me a question. I've yeah. shown you the verse. It doesn't it, answer the question. No, no, no. So you're not just thinking. You think rationally. What goes into the mouth? Consumables. What comes out of the mouth? Words, thoughts, ideas. But what does Jesus. So food won't make you say horrible things. One second. Look, no, look what it says. Look, I'll tell you what it says. What he's saying is that it isn't eating pork that makes you unclean. It isn't drinking alcohol that makes you unclean. What makes you unclean is speaking, is speaking bigotry against Christians and Jews, is speaking hatred against the Kuffar, is calling for the enslavement of, of people in an Islamic caliphate. These are the things that make you unclean. No, no, don't, 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 don't. He, he's got to look. He's got to make his, yeah, yeah. his sure, points, right? Sure, so let him, right. let him do his job. But right, I need to ask him a question. Wait, wait, wait. All you're doing what? is separating your emotions from the argument. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. I, I, yeah, that's I, all you're doing. I, I do my best. You're, 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 you're I'm using, <laughs> you're using, you're using humour based on a daily culture to mock the Christian faith. No, not mocking. Why? So not mocking. Why? Yeah. Anyone who thinks I'm mocking, I apologise in advance. No Right. So here's what I want you to. What I'm saying to you about this particular thing here, right? Say it. Say it. This has come from. Matthew 15 and it's, it's chapter, chapter 11, uh, verse 11, verse, verse 11. 11. Yeah, okay. Jesus is clearly stating in this parable, yes, that what goes in your mouth, statement. what, go, what, what goes into statement. your mouth is, doesn't, make you, doesn't make you say and do nasty things. No, what it's, saying, what it's saying, no, let's actually look at what he's saying because what you've just said is completely wrong. Okay, read it. It says, hear and understand, it is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man. Now, Think about the context in which he is saying this. He's saying this to Jews yeah. who have a concept in the Levitical code of foods that are clean yeah. and unclean. Which he was a Jew himself. Exactly, yeah. right? And he's saying that those foods don't make you defiled. But what does make you defiled is the hatred that you spew from your mouth. Yeah. The kind of bigoted stuff that we hear from the Dai who attack Christians, want to reduce them to make them into dimmies, want to have slaves, want to marry children. These, Ali Dawa defended marrying a child, said he would marry his own child even though she was under the legal age. He would say she was ready. We can do a back flat. You can see it on our clip. We've got him on camera. You ask me, would I allow my daughter to get married at night? I'm saying the analogy is wrong. Because our teaching teaches the woman has to be sexually, mentally and physically ready. Does that mean so if, my, if, if, my, if my daughter... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. If my daughter... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. But let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. If my daughter reached the age of menstruation at nine years old, I would say you are ready... What's it like this? You are ready to get married. Got him on camera. Let's go, Got him let's on camera. But my point to you is, my point to you is, right, is that Jesus. Our conversation is good enough for you. Again. That, well, my, my point to you is. He left us a minute ago. He's made lots of points. Two microphones. Today. Two microphones. <laughs> so, 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 so my, my point to you is, my point to you is, if Jesus is saying that consumables that don't go into your mouth don't defile you, he has made a statement that declares all food clean. I don't agree. Okay, can I well, say you're just arguing you, with a you text. Have you have provided, you have provided, sorry, one second. Can I say something about this? You have provided your reasoning to why you, you accept it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I accept that. Yeah. I don't agree with it. I accept that that is, your, that is what you're taking that, that's from. That's a question, that's yeah. a question. Jesus never had thought, never. 
But that's yes, right. And You're right. Okay. I'm so, happy to say I'm Jesus to never ate pork. Why can't you just but Jesus? Not saying pork? that all food, right? Saying that all Jesus drank alcohol. No, but full stop. He didn't eat pork. He, he, but he, he drank alcohol. Not, so why pork. don't you be like Jesus? Well, well. So, like, so do you see how that argument doesn't but work? You eat pork. Jesus oh, drank pork. wine, bro. Be like pork? Jesus. Is that the last supper? Yeah, I'll show you. Do you want me to show you? Because I know he was at a wedding party and he turned wine to. He turned water, water into wine. wine. Exactly. Yeah, so start. Jesus start. drank start. wine. But I know there is also there is also uh, a, a, a difference of opinion I'm that wine could also be non I, I'm just back what, I'm, what I'm trying to point out to you, bro, is that the silly die argument that you've probably heard. That, you know, we're more like Jesus than the Christians, right? One second, right, is a silly argument. Because Jesus drank alcohol, Muslims don't, I'm talking to you, I'm ignoring him. Jesus drank alcohol, Muslims don't drink alcohol. Jesus kept a Sabbath, Muslims don't keep a Sabbath. Jesus prayed facing Jerusalem, Muslims don't pray facing Jerusalem. Jesus prayed standing up, Muslims don't pray standing up. Again and again and again and again and again, there's lots of ways that Muslims aren't like Jesus. Pointing to ways in which Christians aren't like Jesus is a really bad argument. It works both ways. That's what I'm pointing out to you. I would, I would, argue, I would yeah. argue that we do pray standing up as well. Jesus said, our Father in You have to, otherwise it's not accepted. Yeah. Jesus called God his Father. Muslims don't call God his Father. So again and again and again, Muslims are not like Jesus. But Christians are like Jesus. What's your name, bro? What's your name? Mike, nice to meet you, Mike. I, I appreciate our conversation. I just want to just wanna show that, that Jesus drank wine, right? So Jesus had no problem with alcohol. Oh, so he eat pork. Yeah. No, no Jesus already, didn't. Jesus didn't rich. eat pork. But he didn't eat pork. Let's let's be clear. He didn't eat pork because he thought it was unclean. He didn't eat pork because he just didn't want to eat pork. Oh, really? Because it was part of his sure? custom and his culture and because he had to fulfill the law. And he fulfilled the law by keeping the law so that a holy God might meet a faithful Israel. Can we see that? Yeah. So, sure, right? let me just show you, let me just show you where Jesus drank alcohol. Just to show that Muslims are not like Jesus. Yeah? You really have a bigot here against Muslims. No, no, no. No, it's, no it's, I don't. Preach, no, I really don't. You, you see, that's uh, just another die lie. That's just another die lie. Because you are so pissed. No, that's just another die lie. No, no, that's just another die lie. That's just another die lie. That's just another die lie. Look, we have to be fair. Just he's another die lie. Any, any angle. Even your Muslim every brother is correcting you. Every statement he says. Muslim every Muslim, yeah. even every your Muslim brother is correcting you. But, it's not, but the statements he makes not necessarily for us. Yeah. So, so, so. No, 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 no. You can't. No, you can't. All you've done there is use an ad hominem argument. All that you've done again, just lies. These are just lies. Every time you you criticize. And, and this is one of the reasons. Anyway, I'm going to talk to you, Michael. I'm, I'm done with this guy. He's no, just, he's just, he's just like. So, so my, my point to you is, bro. My really? point to you is, bro. Bring somebody from the DIE yeah. and talk to them. And, and what time are we on? Okay, it's just bro. I, I, I've got to go soon. So, so oh, did you need to know the time? No, no, no. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. So, so. Now the point is, when, when Muslims are defeated in the argument, they go to ad hominem. They go to wild accusations. And you need to run to the free gift that Christ has given to you through his sacrifice on the cross, which is an imitation, not an imitation, but the completion of the sacrifice in the temple, which was foreshadowed by the sacrifice of Abraham to Isaac. And that's the continuity. So, if that's a continuity, last point. Yeah, no, last I really, point. I really last wanted point. to go back onto the ransom, but you got to go, I got to go. Right. Um, so the last point of that. If it was, if it was like something that was being told to us that was going to happen later. Yeah. So is Islam not right that Jesus wasn't dead then? Yeah, Islam is completely wrong in saying that Jesus didn't die on the cross. But and this is the last no. point. This is the last point. No, or no, no. He, he, right. So when the, 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 the point that Just he... Just like he said, no, I'll be in the shall belly I, of the shall I, shall I address that? Because again, die lies, bro. You've just it's been not, manipulated. Not. No, they are. They are. And I'm going to show it, it to you. It can't be a die lie. It is a die lie. You yourself. Shall I explain? Is, uh, Isaac. Sh shall I? You. Shall I explain? He was replaced. Shall I explain? Yeah. Because you didn't. You've obviously forgotten. Go Sincerely, you've obviously forgotten what I said right at the beginning, and I said it. It's recorded on camera. What I yeah. said was, 
that Abraham represents the judgment of God, yeah. Isaac represents humanity, yeah. and the lamb represents Christ. Did the, did the lamb did die? Did that. the lamb die? Yes. There you go. So it corresponds. Okay. So that is what is happening with Abraham, Isaac, and the lamb. The so, lamb represents Christ, but how do as you all the animal sacrifices do. That Isaac represents humanity. humanity. Right. Because of the teaching of the church. The teaching. Did, did God reveal in any way that he wanted to kill everyone and then swapped him, swapped everyone with Jesus? Yeah, so we know that the scriptures say in the book of Romans that the wages of sin is death. We know, as it says in scripture, that everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I've sinned, you've sinned, everyone listening to this conversation has sinned. So therefore, because we were meant to offer our lives to God and failed to do so, what is required is a life. Our lives. But human beings are incapable of giving their lives truly to God. We always sully it. We always mess it up. We always undignify it. So we can't offer ourselves as the sacrifice that we should be. So Christ himself is that sacrifice. And his sacrifice pays the ransom that's the analogy mm -hmm. that we owe and he conquers death and he conquers sin and those that are baptized into him receive that blessing from Christ from his crucifixion okay uh, Michael it was really lovely talking to you it was really was and I really do I appreciate I was there it, for the beginning of it. no though, don't worry don't worry yeah bro I, I want to offer you a gift no, I, no. I give everybody a gift now I'm assuming you've probably got a Bible or have you you have a Bible. Great. I'm not giving you a Bible. Well, what I would, what I want to encourage you, bro, I want to encourage you to pick up that Bible and start reading it again, and maybe think that some of the things that the Dai is saying about the Bible might not be true. And as an example of that, I want to give you this. This is my gift to you. You read it in thirty. You read it in two minutes over a coffee. I'm a little bit disappointed. There's no pictures in it. Though, I know. We're, I try to give out good leaflets. I'm a man of simple views. Right, right. Just a couple of good pictures. Yeah, on yeah. I, I had a joke, but I've I've filtered heavily. <laughs> I've filtered heavily. But my point to you is, bro, you're going to read in that leaflet an example of a Dai Lai mm -hmm. and the Christian answer. Okay. And I want you to remember everything that the Muslims say to you about Christianity is a lie. Everything, absolutely everything they say, and I'm willing to prove it. I'm willing to prove it. Everything. All right. God bless you, Mike. You look after yourself. And if you, bro, bro, Michael, when you pick up that Bible, write down your toughest questions. Your toughest questions. Come back and talk to me. All right. God bless you, bro. Okay. JC. Yeah, let's do a wrap up. So, bro, we 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 challenged the Dayi in the corner about a self-contradiction in the Quran. The Quran says that Allah provided a ransom sacrifice to save the son Ishmael. Is how Muslims understand it. How does Allah ransom something to himself? A ransom by definition is a transaction between party A and party B. Now, it simply demonstrates that the Quran, it simply demonstrates that the Quran has a contradiction inside of it. And the reason why it has that contradiction is because Muhammad borrowed a story from the Jews that he didn't understand. The Jews have that story in their Old Testament because God was always going to establish that sacrifice is a ransom for humanity. And he showed that with Abraham, he showed that in the first temple and their sacrifices. And both of these things point to the ultimate sacrifice, Christ's sacrifice, which is a ransom of the Son offered to the Father for humanity, for the debt that we owe Him for our lives. So in the Christian faith, Abraham's sacrifice makes sense. It leads naturally to the sacrifice of the first temple, which needs naturally and rightly to the sacrifice of Jesus. 
but in the Quran yeah. that they just called pagan, okay. you have the same concept. We don't. Say in the Arabic. Allah yeah. sacrificed a ransom for Ishmael that he just he called pagan. That he just called pagan. So, according to these two Muslims, Allah is a pagan. No, ladies and gentlemen. The illogical contradiction is that Allah is offering a sacrifice ransom to himself, which makes no sense at all. No sense at all. Ladies and gentlemen, the Quran says that if I can find a contradiction in the Quran, it's not from Allah. And I've just found a contradiction in the Quran. By contrast, ladies and gentlemen, by contrast, we Christians don't have that contradiction in our faith. Muslims come to this corner every week attacking the Christian faith. And so we are allowed. It is legitimate for us also to criticize Islam. I invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to pick up a Bible and to read it for yourselves apart from the lies that the Dai say, apart from the lies of the secular media, read it for yourselves and speak to a knowledgeable Christian about it. Good night and God bless. You just called your own God a pagan. Thank you very much. You said it, you said it, you said it. You said sacrifice was pagan. So Allah from you is a pagan because Allah provided a sacrifice to himself which is a contradiction. Exactly.